GB News Tavern is open on this bank holiday Monday. And I'm joined by Lizzie Cundy, TV personality and the first football wag. Wow. <laughs> what is... That makes me sound old. <laughs> no, it wasn't meant to be said in Cheers, that way. Nigel. Good Cheers. to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Mm. Now, you were in a way, weren't you? You know. Mm. Suddenly, the wives and girlfriends of footballers mm. became this big thing, and it's gone on being yeah. a big thing. But now it seems the sort of legal fights going on between well, them. That's and it, yeah. Uh, wags at war, it is it, indeed. But um, when it first started, it was in um, Baden Baden, Germany, yeah. and uh, I was asked to go out and report for it for ITV. And let me tell you, I had never seen anything like it. It was like the Beatles had arrived. Everyone was screaming, paparazzi, going mad for these girls. And, you know, it was the press that called them wags. Yeah, yeah. All out, What's wags? You know, wives and girlfriends. And it, it just came a name. Some of them loved it. Some of them loathed it. But um, and some made a living from it, like myself. Well, you, um, I mean, look, Lizzie, you know, <laughs> you've gone on to do just an extraordinary array of things. Mm. You know, you've done all sorts of TV, film, journalism, radio, telly. You're still writing, I think, for OK yes, and all yeah. these magazines. Uh, you've got your book out, yeah. you know, Tales from the Red Carpet. Indeed, Nigel. You we... even get a mention, I think. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're in there oh, you are. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, what was it with you? I mean, you know, clearly, clearly, you know, in the, the marriage went wrong and that happens yeah. in life. But was it you sort of suddenly saw all these cameras and thought, I can do this? Well, you know what? I, I actually went on to this morning's show with Jason and he had um, testicular cancer. Yeah, and, which, uh, I, which I'd had years ago, too. I didn't yeah, know yeah, that, yeah, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted to make a point that men were dreadful at going to the doctor. And, Quite. you know, obviously early detection is so important. Yeah. Um, and I did a chat with them and then afterwards they said, look, you're so comfy on the sofa and easy to talk to. Would you do this other segment for us? And then it went on from there. And before I knew it, I was out with the World Cup for ITV. I had my own show called Wags World, where I'd go in footballers' drawers and get the, you know, the wives to tell me all the secrets. That went on for eight years. And Richard Desmond asked me to do OK TV, which went on for another nine years in ITV at the movie. So really, it was a snowball effect. But my sadly marriage did split, yeah. and I kind of had to reinvent myself. I had to work. I wasn't, um, you know, like some of these footballers' wages, which are sky high. Um, I had a family to look after, two boys. And all I thought, well, look, I'll, I'll be myself and um, know what I know, you know, and I love showbiz, love football. It's all a long way, isn't it, from mm. being raised by nuns at a Catholic school? <laughs> I know, if they could see me now. But these nuns, it's true, are a very strict Catholic school. I yep. mean, if you saw a man in the building, a builder, we were all like, wow, there's a man here. Um, but it was it was quite tough. But my father was in advertising, Saatchi and Saatchi, yeah. and did lots of big brands. And so I, I made friends with the nuns and we used to do sort of deals so I could go to Top of the Pops and go to these events when I shouldn't really be going. And they let me off getting, you know, coming in late. What you've done, I mean, the stuff you've <laughs> What's the most fun thing you've done in this sort of celeb media world? What's the most fun? Well, I, I love the National Telly Awards. I love the Oscars. That was incredible. And um, very luckily met some amazing people, been able to interview people I only ever dreamed of as a kid. Um, and it, it's, it's a, you know, it sounds glamorous. At times I'm waiting on the red carpet, posing like a teapot in the pouring rain mm. and wind. But I have to say, Oscars was pretty cool. It was amazing. And I, I just think, you know, it's usually the real high up named celebrities are the kindest. Those that are, you know, not so, aren't so nice. But people like Tom Cruise, hilarious, you know, will come and say, join us for dinner. Yeah. Um, you know, really wonderful. Uh, and I've been very blessed, very lucky. I mean, Celeb World is, Celeb World is, it's, it's, it, 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 it shows no sign of going backwards. I mean, celebs become, in, in some ways, if you look at the younger generation, I, I, I think I could be wrong, but I think social media has accelerated well, celeb yeah. stardom uh, to such a level. I mean... I think it's because they, it, they can be accessible. You used to be Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, yep. front cover of a magazine. Yep. That doesn't sell anymore. Um, it, it's the, 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 the celebs we see on the TV... The wags, they sell newspapers, they sell magazines, because I think 
you know, when you're little reading it or younger, you think, gosh, I've got a chance to be like that. When you see Hollywood signs, you think that's not obtainable. But how do these celebs stay sane? Because they can't go to, I mean, you know, I've had a bit of it in a way, but, you know, you can't go to a restaurant, you can't go to a pub, and people have, I mean, you know, I've had it, I've been sitting on an aeroplane. People mm. walk up the aisle and go in front of you and say, I mean, yeah. I mean it, very difficult to live any sort of normal life as a celeb, isn't it? Yeah, but I think in some way, what I think of it is that you are very blessed in a blessed situation and um, I get many benefits. My friend Bruno Tonioli, I mean, when we're out for dinner, you can't get a minute to talk to ourselves because people are coming over yeah, asking but that's about horrible, isn't it? But, but isn't that, I mean, it can be nice at times. Yeah, it can have its down parts. I, I find sometimes the intrusion into your private life and people writing things that aren't true can be tough but I think you've got to take the tough you know the bad stuff with the good and in a way people say well you've sold your soul you know you're you're on the Daily Mail online or you're Ooh. in but you, you know you do have feelings I'm you know I'm not a robot but I find if you have a sense of humor you can laugh it off and I, I always laugh because I remember yeah I mean you've had some tough to. you've had some tough times with the press haven't you yeah I have and uh, a, a, you know big uh, divorce I mean only my mum knew that we were splitting and before I knew it there was a journalist on my doorstep saying yeah. look we're printing it either way you tell me or we're going to run it anyway so it that was tough. That was really tough when you've got two young kids and your private life. I haven't been the best at choosing men, Nigel, <laughs> which doesn't do me any favours. Um, I, well, I have I had, I had read about it. <laughs> I know. You know. We'll forget about that one. But, um, yeah, it, it can be tough, that side of it. Hmm. And you and often think, are people with you because they want to get in the paper or they're thinking they can get some sort of fame or lifestyle? That It's hard to trust. Has Leveson changed this a little bit? Has Leveson... Yeah. Leveson has, I mean, I think before what was happening with celebs, uh, you know, was that journalists would trespass on land, take a photograph of people in a private situation around a swimming pool or whatever it was, and that was fair game to publish. And that isn't now. So is, yeah. is the balance a bit more reasonable? It is, it is, Nigel. And in Leveson, they can't just write willy nilly anything which yeah. it used to be. Yeah. I mean, I remember picking up a certain newspaper thinking, where have they got this from? And it was totally made up, and other sources were getting paid huge amounts of money. And well, the worst thing is when they write bad stories, isn't they true? <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't talk about those, I know. Oh, my poor mum, when she read some of the stories, it's like, yeah, it's true. But, um, yeah, Leveson has helped. Yeah. But, um, and the our press, I think, get a hard time uh, at times. Um, you know, we have, say, Meghan Markle usually whinging and moaning about oh. the press, taking them to court. But we forget, when she first arrived on the scene, everyone welcomed her with open arms. The press was, um, in, you know, so good about her, more so than Kate. It was incredible when you look at the... Oh, it was a the real press... fairy tale start, it wasn't was, it? It was, indeed. Yeah, no, in every, and it, the longest honeymoon you've ever had. Oh. Now, you knew her going back a bit, didn't you? I knew her in, when she was in a show called Suits. Yeah. We're going back... Uh, I mean, I didn't know who she was at the time. And I was at a charity event, um, and I think you may know him, John Caldwell. Yeah. And he said, look, can, can you sit next to this girl? Um, she's flown in from Canada. And I wanted to be with my mates. So I was like, no, I'm gonna, I want to sit with my friends and have a giggle. He was like, no, look after her. But actually, we got on really, really well. And, had a, and we did have a huge giggle. And she wanted to find an English boyfriend. So I said, look, I'll help you. So I was going through my phone. There was Ashley Cole, Chelsea footballer. Um, I was trying. But, um, yeah, it was it was quite funny. But she did want to have an English boyfriend. That was her plan all along. Yeah, and she, lo she yeah. loved being here in, in London. So she wanted to work here. She actually wanted to be in Made in Chelsea, the show. I remember saying she loved the show. Really? But she was, she was a real good, fun girl. And how she behaved since? Well, no, she ghosted me and Piers Morgan. Uh, she didn't... Uh, oh, when she got with Prince Harry and it all, you know, happened, mm. she she did cut off a lot of people, which I understand, because I think celebrity is very different to, to royalty. Of course. But, of course. Um, no, I, you know, and I've been quite vocal on how I feel... Yeah. They've behaved. Yeah. Um, well, you're never back back with the coming forwards, Lizzie, but, you know, away from all of the celeb yes. and the stardusty stuff, there's actually quite a serious political, you know, sort of political side to you, isn't there? You, you, yeah. you're, you're very into your politics. I love my politics. You much. really care. I know we've debated it before. You're passionate okay. about things. Um, 
But Boris Johnson, I think, I think you're feeling a bit disappointed, aren't you? I'm very disappointed in him, yeah. And um, I couldn't say goodbye to a very dear friend of mine that passed away through the pandemic. And then when I, you know, saw our Queen sitting on her own at her husband's funeral and there he is partying on, um, it, it gets to me and I, I can't forgive and forget it. And I know he'll hope it will go away and Sue Gray report, let's put it off mm. with everything else. But I, I really don't think... For me and many others and thousands and thousands of families out there that can say goodbye to their loved ones can forget it. And I'm sorry, if we haven't got a prime minister we can trust, that is, I mean, how can we go on? But it was interesting. I don't know whether you saw earlier on, I had a, you know, quite a well-known pollster on earlier. You know, 72% in one poll, 75 in another, think the prime minister is a liar. Now, you know, if we'd said that 20, 40 years ago, it would have been unthinkable mm. that anybody could be in that position mm. as PM. Mm. But interesting what Chris Curtis said... He said, the trouble is, he said, actually, the public think they're all liars, so Boris Johnson is not as disadvantaged <laughs> by this. Uh, but you feel it, it, it is a matter of trust. In well, it is a matter of trust. And if we, we can't trust our own prime minister. I mean, we're becoming the laughing stock of every... I don't believe anything now he says. And I know we're, we've, we, it's horrific what's happening in the Ukraine. And people are saying, mm. oh, there are far more important things. Actually, you know what? This is still important and it's not going to go away. And I think he's hoping we can brush it under the carpet. But no, we can't. Thoughts on, uh, thoughts on Pretty Patel's plan for Rwanda? Will it stop the cross-channel problem? I don't know, Nigel. I heard you earlier. Mm. But I, I, it's very sad. I, it's just a whole sad situation. But I, I just don't like... I just think if you're going to take that crossing, you know you want to get here for a better life. And, you, you know, and... But sending them back, will it deter them? Will it stop them? I think it might. I think it might do that. If, yeah, I, mean, I think this is my view. If they actually did send people to Rwanda, then why would you pay two and a half thousand no. quid to a criminal gang to get you across the channel? But will know? it stop the criminal gangs? They'll still continue, will it? I mean... Well, I, at the end of the day, it's all about those who are paying the traffickers. I mean, look, let's see where we go with it. It's very, very new. I mean, I'm giving her credit for at least trying something. Mm. Uh, you know, and it is an ongoing problem, and it is an issue. So what's going to happen post-Boris? Who is there post-Boris? Can you see the next leader? Nigel, what happened to you? Come well, on, I'm Nigel! Not, you know, but they won't have me in the Conservative Party, <laughs> so it can't be no, me. I'm too much the outsider, you know. Nigel, I think we've got to get some. I don't know, one of the back benches, Bernard Jenkins, I used to... Uh, I mean, I, I know you're laughing, <laughs> but... I no, I'm not laughing. We need someone that yeah. we can feel we can believe in again. Yeah. No, absolutely. And Boris, for me, has become a bit of a Didn't buffoon. Great showman. Look, oh. He's like Trump on a budget. Oh. He's your friend. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Great showman. Uh, do, you know, for the, the shows he's great at, but... Yeah, he's a cheerleader. He's a great cheerleader. Mm. I've always thought that, you know. Have I got news for you? He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. not as our Prime Minister. No, and we well, have to have someone who we can trust. I think a growing number of people think, Lizzie, that you're right on that. Now, look, you mentioned the Oscars earlier. Yeah. Um, I just have to ask you about this trans issue, which seems to dominate so much public conversation mm. these days, whether it's women's sport and it's Leah Thomas, the, swim, the swimmer, uh, whether it's the Oscars now not having best woman actor mm. and best female actress. I, are we losing our minds? I think it's gone one step too far and I think the woke brigade have come in and we can't... I think it's sad. I mean, look at Adele. She even said it when she won the award. You can't be celebrated as a female artist. She said it with passion, didn't she? And she said it with passion. And the music industry is a very male orientated industry, as is the film business. And not to be celebrated as a woman, to strive and get through what you've got through to be celebrated. And we are different. Let's be honest. It's, it's, it's genetics. We are different. And thank oh, the Lord we are. Anymore. You can't say that. You're <laughs> no, but we are different in some ways. And I just think it's... A, I, I know we have to move on in times, but it's sad we can't be celebrated. Uh, I, I think it's quite sad. And look, we've got the Soap Awards there. I've heard that have, have scraps. Having any, uh, you know, best actress, best actor, it's all gone. It's crackers. And I just feel that some of the actresses and actors will lose out because of that. Yeah. That's my view. No, there's no doubt. Lizzie Candy, thank you for joining me on Talking Pines. Lovely to see you, Nigel. Cheers. Cheers.